Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're rotating or revolving a surface here about the x-axis. The surface is created by an equation. The equation in this case is a parabolic equation, y equals 3x squared. So we need to find the surface area. We then revolve that around that, and we also need to find the centroid. The object is eventually to find the volume of that object created when I take the surface and revolve it around the x-axis. So here in this example, we're first going to have to find the area of this surface right here. And then we're going to have to find the centroid. And then we're going to have to use the equation from the theorem of Pappus Gildinus to find the volume. Remember the equation here, volume is equal to the area times the distance covered by the centroid, which is going to be a circular path. That's equal to 2 pi times the y-coordinate of the centroid relative to the x-axis. That's this distance right here. That's y uh, with a line over. That just means, simply means the y-coordinate of the centroid. For parabolic shapes like this, the centroid is always equal to, for the x-coordinate, 3a divided by 4, a being the distance from the vertex right here at the origin to this point right here. And h would be the height from there to there. The height can be found by plugging that into the equation. h is equal to 3 times a squared. In this case, we replace, uh, for x, we replace a. And that means that this is equal to 3a squared, which is equal to 3 times 4 squared, which is equal to 16 times 3, or 48. So the height here would be 48. The distance here would be 4. And that's how we'll able to find the centroid. The y coordinate of the centroid is equal to 3h divided by 10, which is equal to 3 times h, in this case is 48, divided by 10. And 48, that's uh, 140, let's see, 48 times 3, that's 144, divided by 10, 14.4. That's the distance to the centroid in the vertical direction away from the x-axis. That gives us this value right here. I did put centimeters there, but I'm not sure if these are centimeters. Let's just say all units in centimeters. So then we can go ahead and at least put a, a value there. Now we need to find the area, and that's what's different about this particular example. The area cannot easily be found. We have to go, we have to find this using integration. We can take a small little strip right here. The small, small little strip has an area called dA. The dA would be equal to the height, which is equal to y, and the width, which is equal to a dx. So dA is equal to y dx, and a is equal to the integral of all the dA's, which is equal to the integral of all the y times the x's, and we're going to have to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 4, from 0 to 4. Instead of writing y with a dx, we need to find what y is equal to in terms of x, which can be found using the equation. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 4 of 3x squared dx, which is relatively easy to integrate. You can take the 3 outside the integral sign. This becomes 3 times x cubed over 3. The 3's cancel out, and we have to evaluate it from 0 to 4. When we plug in a 4 here, we get 4 cubed, which is 64, and that would be the area. That would be 64 centimeters squared to, uh, for the area, and that we can go ahead and plug that in there. Finally, we can find the volume created by taking this parabolic shape and revolving around the x-axis. Area is 64 times 2 pi times the height we said was 14.4. Finally, that's going to be the volume in cubic centimeters times 64 times 2 times pi equals the total volume of 5,791 cubic centimeters. And that's how that's done. Again, the way we do that is we recognize that there's a parabolic shape for which we need to find the area. That's the first part of the equation. We also need to find the centroid for a parabolic shape, the centroid. The x-coordinate is 3a divided by 4a being the distance from the vertex to here. 3h over 10 is the distance from here to that spot, right? Oh, so I'm sorry, that's the y-coordinate of the vertex. h can be found by taking this distance here, which can be calculated using the equation. Plugging a in here, that gives you h. 
Finally, we then realize that if we have the area which we plug in here, and we have the y corner the, of the centroid, which we can plug in here, then we can simply find the volume using that technique. Really easy. Of course, you can find this using slices. You can do integrals uh, using um, multidimensional integrals in the x and the y direction, making little slices and finding it that way. But notice how easy the papas galdinas theorem is to, with some simple integration and some simple calculation for the centroid, you can also find the volume of that particular object.